Hey everyone, Dave here, coming to you from my tiny little kitchen. Uh, today I'm going to cook up some strawberry rhubarb jam. Uh, if you like what I'm uh, cooking up here, please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe and share. Everything goes to help support. Uh, hope you enjoy what I'm about to cook up. Let's get rolling. So you have to have thawed fruit. And here's a little trip tip to help you thaw your fruit faster. Take it, spread it out, a little bit of parchment paper. And that'll help thaw it faster. So have enough jars for what you're going to do, maybe you know one or two extra just so uh, you don't run out at a critical time. I've got my uh, canning pot here, I'll bring that up to a boil and uh, I'll submerge my mason jars lids for about 10 minutes to sterilize them. Okay, my uh, water is up to a boil. And I'm going to immerse each bottle, or mason jar, sorry. Throwing all the lids. Lid on. And I'll set a timer for 10 minutes. And that will sterilize my jars. Well, there goes my 10 minute timer on the jars. So, lid off. When you buy a, uh, a canning kit, it comes with these nice little jar grips. And I've got a uh, cutting board set up on the other elements here just to give me a flat surface with a clean paper towel on them. So, you just want to grab each jar. Get the liquid out of it and set it up over here, upside down. And I did sterilize five jars. I suspect I'll only need four, but it's uh, nicer to have too much than too little. And when you buy your canning kit, it also comes with this handy little tool. It's got a magnet in the end. Allows you to pick up the other components.
So now the strawberries are thawed out and I want to mash them down before I cook them. So I'm just going to put them in here and blend them all off. And I mean, if you got a few chunky pieces, that's okay too. So that yielded me just a little over two cups of blended strawberries. Okay, so two cups of strawberry into the pot. Now I'm going to measure off how much rhubarb I have now that it's all thawed out. And I'm just um, building this recipe based on the fruit that came out of the two bags. So there's going to be lots of different uh, variations of quantities of fruit and sugar that you would use. As you can see from this one, I have about three and a half cups of uh, rhubarb. And I have two cups of strawberries. For the uh, <clears throat> sugar por portion of this uh, recipe, I'm using two and a half cups of sugar. So I'm putting two cups in one bowl. And a half a cup in another bowl. So I'm using red Serto, and I'm going to take the one package of the red Serto, and this goes in with a half a cup of sugar. And that gets mixed together. So it's evenly distributed and then we add it to the fruit. And we mix that all together good. So it's nice and evenly combined. Turn that on and bring it up to a slow boil. When you turn the fruit on, and as it's coming up to temperature, you want to add some lemon juice. Um, for this recipe, I'm putting in one tablespoon. Now the uh, reason you add the lemon juice is it's an acid. So as the fruit breaks down and cooks, it loses its natural pectin 
and on a micro scientific level the particles will actually repel each other so by putting in the lemon juice you are lowering the pH and allowing it to gel so the jam's up to a slow rolling boil been boiling for about a minute and now I'm going to add the sugar the two cups of sugar and I'm going to combine that and then bring it back up to a boil and you're going to have to uh, stir it constantly at this point because you don't want it to burn and you also want to be careful because it'll have a tendency to foam up and go over the rim of your pot so up to a slow boil gently stirring So I can see the start of the boil happening. So now just uh, keep on slow stirring and let it uh, boil for about a minute. So I'm going to get in there with the immersion blender and I'm going to blend up uh, the rhubarb and uh, the strawberry mixture all together uh, so it's not quite so chunky, a little more smooth. So the boil is done and now I've taken it off the heat. I want to spend about five minutes just skimming off that foam that it rises to the top. OK, 
get as much of the foam out as you can. And do that, do that, like I said, for about five minutes. Skim off the foam, stir it, let the foam come up, skim it off again. Alright, I am ready to jar. So, handy little funnel into the jar. You want to fill these till they're about half an inch from the top. lid on, screw down. And you want to screw it so it's just kind of hand tight, easy enough to get off again, but just like that, and set them aside. Looks like I'm going to get about three jars out of this batch. more in there. So it appears, in this recipe, with these larger, uh, I believe, 500 ml jars, I'm getting two and about three quarters. So this last one, I won't put on the shelf. Okay, here's the uh, final result on the strawberry rhubarb jam. I ended up using the 500 ml jars and I've got two and about three quarters. If I would have used my smaller 250 ml uh, mason jars, obviously I would have got uh, five jars full plus a little bit extra, but uh, here it is. If your jam does not set you can always use this as an ice cream topping. Works great. But uh, they still feel a little warm. They've been sitting now for about two hours. But uh, I'll let them sit for another hour. And then these two will go on my shelf. This one will go into the fridge to get used right away. Strawberry rhubarb jam.